Hello, um, in this video I will focus on phasor form of Maxwell's equations. We can use this form if our fields are sinusoidal with respect to time. Um, and when I, I mean sinusoid, I, I, when I say sinusoidal, I mean that you have only one frequency. So if you have an antenna and this antenna has an excitation that creates only one frequency, then you can simplify the analysis a lot by using this phasor form of Maxwell's equations because the phasor form um, allows you to uh, to use phasors rather than using time domain quantities this is very similar to what we do in circuits when, when we say that for one specific frequency we can say that the impedance of an inductance is g omega l or that of a capacitance of 1 over g omega c exactly the same thing is happening here this gives us more flexibility, makes things way easier. Of course, in many applications, you may have to simulate your structure for a number of frequencies. But if you are talking only about one frequency at a time, then using frequency domain Maxwell's equations, or we call them the phasor form Maxwell's equation, may be helpful. Okay, so I start by remind you of the, of the, reminding you of these equations. Uh, the first Maxwell equation is curly E is minus partial B partial T. If you are talking about a phasor, partial partial T becomes J omega, and everything becomes a phasor. So E here is a phasor, it's a vector, and it's a phasor. So very important to understand that, that E as a vector, it still has three components, okay? EX, it's a phasor, EY is a phasor, EZ is a phasor, okay? Each one of them can have its own amplitude and phase. They are all sinusoidals with the same with the same frequency, but they differ in their amplitude and their phase. So very important to remember when I say both a notation like this, E tilde, E is a vector meaning that it has at every point in space three components, and all these components they have the same frequency in time, but they differ in their amplitude and phase. The same thing we have for H, H will also have three components, J will have also three components. So the first equation that we used to have in the time domain is curl E minus partial B partial T, replace partial partial T by J omega, and this will be the phasor equation. The other one was curl H is equal to J plus partial D partial T, partial partial T is replaced by J omega, and epsilon and D is epsilon E. Um, so... After you have done your solution in the frequency domain, you can take back your phasor and write it as a time domain quantity, multiplying by e to the j omega t. Omega is the frequency of the source that you have, okay? Angular frequency here, not frequency, it's angular frequency. Omega is 2 by f, or f is frequency in hertz. This is very similar to what we did in phasors for circuits. You can get the, the solution of the, of the voltage V as a phasor, and then you multiply by E to the J omega T and take the real part to obtain the corresponding sinusoidal waveform. Okay, let's have a problem on this. We have this um, uh, magnetic field. Uh, it's 50 cosine 10 to the bar 9T minus 5Y AZ milliampere per meter. So it's a magnetic field, it's a magnetic field in the z direction, but the field is, the wave is propagating in the y direction. This is minus 5y, so this is minus beta y. Uh, it's sinusoidal, it's frequency, it has only one frequency. Uh, its angular frequency is 10 to the power 9 radian per second. So you can find E using time domain, or you can exploit the fact that this is just one frequency, and then use e using e, to get e using frequency domain Maxwell's equations. I advise you that every problem I solve it using the time domain to do it using the time harmonic form of Maxwell's equations. We call it the phasor form or the time harmonic form or the frequency domain form. Okay, and every example that's solved using the time harmonic form, you try to solve it using the regular Maxwell's equation, the time domain Maxwell's equations. By doing that, you will have more confidence that you can handle general problems. Okay, let's start by, by solving this problem. Of course, you say frequency domain. This means that we have to convert this first to a phasor. 
The phaser has the amplitudes about the amplitude. It has information about the amplitude and the phase. The amplitude is 50 milliampere per meter, and the phase is e to the minus j 5 y. Okay, this is e to the j omega t, but we now we remove the t part in order to be able to do complex uh, domain analysis. Okay, so this is what I do. I simply wrote here h again. And when I say r, I mean h as a function of x, y, and z, and t. This is what this means, okay? If this is h as a function of time and space, then this is h tilde as a phasor. You can see the amplitude, e to the minus j the phase. And the phase here is minus 5y. Okay, and of course, I'm not going to forget mainly ampere per meter. If I want to get the electric field from this one, I can use this equation here. Um, G omega epsilon E is equal to curl H. Or curl H is equal to G omega epsilon E. So what I have to do, I have to take the curl of this term. This, this field here has only a Z component, and this component is a function of Y. So this is why I wrote the curl, uh, um, um, the curl determinant, AX, EY, EZ, and so on. And here I used only HZ. Because you could see this field has only a Z component. So this is a Z component that I wrote here. I didn't expand it because the, it's, it's, uh, it's long for the space I have. But this term here is nothing but 50 e to the minus G5Y. Now, let's see how many components we're going to get for H. First to remove first column, first row. This is indeed a function of Y, and this would be 0, so I'm going to get a component here. Let's talk about the other one. HZ is not a function of X, so this AY component would be 0. Let's talk about this one. This will give me 0, this will give me 0. So I have only an X component, and it is partial HZ, partial Y in the X direction. So, we have to go back and differentiate this term relative to y. The derivative of e to the minus g5y relative to y is minus g5. Multiply minus g5 by 50, you get minus 250j e to the minus g50y. And remember, this is a milliampere per meter. So, this y have this 10 to the minus 3. And this will be in the x direction. So, we started with a magnetic field in the z direction with the electric field is in the x direction, and it's a, it's a phasor as well. Now, this minus j, and as I explained before in uh, previous courses like 2CI5 and so on, you can write it as e to the minus j pi over 2, and then you add it to this term. So minus j is e to the minus j pi over 2. If this was plus j, then it's e to the j pi over 2, okay? So, this will give us j omega epsilon e, but I need only e, then I have to divide both sides by j omega. Omega is known, omega is given, omega is 10 to the power 9. And no one said anything about the medium in which the wave is propagating, then I'm going to assume it's free space. Epsilon is equal to epsilon naught, 1 over 36 pi 10 to the minus 9. By doing that, I can get exactly an expression for the phasor of the electric field. So we make some substitutions. Omega is given 10 to the power 9 radian per second. Epsilon is equal to epsilon naught 1 over 36 by 10 to the minus 9. If you divide by omega epsilon, 10 to the minus 9 will cancel 10 to the power 9. 1 over 36 pi will go to the numerator. Um, J will cancel with J and you are left with the negative sign. So, uh, so this is how things will look like. If you multiply this term by this term and cancel the 10 to the minus 3, this is what you're going to obtain, and the result here will be, I forgot to put the, the new units, would be volt per meter, okay? I got rid already of the milli, um, and the result here is simply volt per meter, because 10 to the minus 3 was canceled with, the, with three digits from this product here. Okay, so this is the phasor of the electric field. What is the electric field? Multiply this term by e to the j omega t and the omega is 10 to the power 9 and then take the real part and it's going to give you a cosine. So this is the expression of the uh, electric field here. It is this one. Of course, you could absorb this negative sign inside and then you add a phase of pi. You could do that as well. Okay, but I, I left it like that 
but of course you can absorb this negative sign because this is not really a proper phaser. A proper phaser should have the amplitude as positive. So uh, yeah, if you want, you can do that. You can write this nine minus negative sign here. I could do that as well. I could uh, maybe I can write with a negative with a red color here. So minus one, you can replace it by e to the j pi. Okay, I could do that as well. Okay. Uh, anyway, this is indeed a correct expression for the electric field, even though this is not really an, a, a typical phasor because the phasor should have a positive amplitude, but it doesn't matter. So we have this this expression here for the electric field. The electric field is also propagating in the y direction, but it has only an x component. An, an x component actually it has a negative x component because of this negative sign. So to summarize. We started with a magnetic field in the um, we started the magnetic field here in the z direction, and it's a function of y and t. We end up with an electric field in the minus x direction, and it's a function of y and t as well. Both the expressions for h and e are traveling wave expressions, and if you take a look, the expression is they are traveling in the y direction. They are in the form cosine omega t minus beta y. Okay, so if you take the cross product between minus AX and the AZ, you will see that this will is going to give you here AY. Minus AX cross AZ will give you AY. Okay, so this is indeed the direction of wave propagation. So these two fields travel together in space together, okay, in the direction of Y. And you can, this is a typical uh, traveling wave. And you, you can use it, of course, to send the information by changing the amplitude, the frequency, or the phase of the electric of this wave, the electric and magnetic field components.